Well, welcome to another edition of ALZ Voices. I'm Chuck Gatica. I'm glad to be here with you. And, uh, you know, the walk uh, just happened. It was postponed into the calendar year because of the pandemic. Uh, and we're still sort of looking over our shoulder at all that's happened with the walk and the walks all across the state of Michigan, Southeast Michigan especially. Don't forget, you can still participate by joining a team. You can still uh, donate to a team by going to alz.org slash walk. It's not too late because you can contribute all the way up to the end of the year. One of the pleasures I have of being involved, not just to uh, be involved in the walk, uh, is to get to know some people who are big supporters of all, the Alzheimer's Association and a top tier supporter and sponsor is a group called Anthology. And we'll explain what that name is because it's so cool. I see it on a sign near my house all the time, but I really want to know uh, where it's even coming from. Uh, Caitlin Gilchrist is Director of Sales and Marketing for Anthology and Troy. Good to have you with us, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Glad and, to be here. Oh, good. And we've also got Kayla Meek, who's the National Director of Resident Experience. You guys have long titles. That's awesome. <laughs> it means I'm talking, yes. to, I'm talking to royalty or somebody that's the boss of me. So uh, glad Absolutely. to have you here too, Kayla. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's start with you from a, a national perspective, and then we'll drill down because Caitlin is going to help us understand what's happening in Southeast Michigan. Anthology is the name of several senior living communities, right? Absolutely. So anthology, just by the mere definition of anthology, is it's a collection of stories or poems or literary works. And so it's really representative of what we do. You know, we bring this group of wonderful people into our communities. Each and every one of them has a beautiful life story. They've all been um, so impactful upon the lives of others, and they are able to continue to build their life story out with us. So anthology is just a representation of the collection of great people that we have in our communities and their story that continues. And because of that and the nature of all the people that you're getting, Kayla, uh, you're seeing independent living, assisted living, and memory care. Is that the case at all of your locations? We have a variety of offerings at all of our locations. We have some communities that are just independent living. We have communities that are all three. Um, we even have um, communities with a program is what we call Enclave, which is a very special offering, I would say. It's a little bit of a step in between assisted living and memory care. So what it offers is a little bit more support than you might see in assisted living, but mm -hmm. it's great for someone who may not quite be ready for um, an environment quite like memory care. So it gives them some additional support, um, but still allows them free movement in the community. They still continue to have meals. It's just a little bit more quaint and supportive. That's great to know. And Caitlin, I know that uh, here in Southeast Michigan, while you're up in Troy, there is some big news coming out of Novi, right? Is, there a, is it open now, your new location? Yes, very exciting. So we have in the greater Detroit area, we have a community in Troy, Rochester, Northville, and Novi, and we are opening um, independent in Novi. So that is the only one in Detroit right now. All the other communities are assisted living in memory care. Okay, and I, I mentioned to you before we started, I, so when I go on bike rides, which is nearly every day, uh, you know, which is good for my health, and, uh, and, and I have neighbors who lived in my community who have now moved to the anthology in Northville. And so I was in your uh, community there just before the pandemic started. And I have to say, it's, um, you know, I don't want to make it sound glib, uh, but it, it really is kind of like a cruise ship. I mean, it's amazing what the centers have become now. Uh, at one point, while we were walking through, my wife said to me, I'm not kidding, I can't wait. I said, no, we could wait a minute, honey. It's okay. <laughs> you know, but it, it is really something to see all the amenities and all that you offer for so many people who are coming to visit, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Now tell me, uh, uh, Novi is open now? They are opening this month. Independent is opening. Yeah. Um, and soon to follow assisted living and memory care in Novi. So for obvious reasons, it's, um, it's a fact that most of the people would be retired and certainly considered seniors, right? I'm a baby boomer. Don't dare call me a senior. We don't want to hear that word. But it would be fair to say that a lot of people there, and they may not even need memory care, but they may just want to be living or they've lost a spouse. It would make perfect sense for your organization to be behind and sponsor Alzheimer's organization. That's but there's more to it, right? It's a little deeper than just that. It's not just about business. No, it's not. Um, I think 
a lot of people go into this industry. I know speaking from a personal experience, my grandma had Alzheimer's and mm -hmm. that is where you get the passion and the drive of working with seniors, right? So to be a part of the Alzheimer's Association, be able to walk and show your support and to ultimately, you know, support one another to find a cure is what it's all about. And Kayla, if I jump back to you for a moment, tell us when you think of someone who's in need of memory care or what was it called? Enhance, the program that's... Um, yeah, so we have an enhanced assisted yeah. living community. Mm -hmm. And so if you're now experiencing some issues with dementia or Alzheimer's, what is it that you're offering a person that's suffering from it? And then, of course, for the families that you'll see often, you know, that have... Uh, up right. until the heart of the pandemic had a hard time collectively gathering, but now that's going to be changing, we hope, more mm -hmm. and more. Um, offering a variety of opportunities for continued um, moments of purposefulness and meaningfulness is especially what we um, place a lot of emphasis on, and not just for the resident themselves, but for their families too. Mm -hmm. Because as an individual moves through the progression of dementia, it doesn't solely affect them, it affects everyone who loves them. So in addition to all of the offerings at our communities with our beautiful amenity spaces, um, our environments themselves, our five-star dining, our engagements and programming, we do also offer additional opportunities for connection with their family members. We have so continued moments of um, opportunities for engagement um, and education is what we find such uh, value in. And you know, Kayla and Caitlin, I didn't have a chance to mention to you, I've gone through this with my mom and sadly we lost her last year, but even uh, toward the end of her life and in this process, which was about a six year long journey with Alzheimer's, it became apparent that things were changing that not only we would have to deal with, but caretakers around her, the, the taste of her food. She would say, I don't like it. Well, you used to love roast beef, you know? And I think one of the things that I've come to appreciate about uh, folks like you and your cohorts who actually work in the centers on a daily basis as well is that the customer is always right. You know, you can't argue them out of whatever it is that they think they're feeling or they're seeing, you know, and so there's so much care that has to go into dealing with people that have dementia and Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So we say join their journey, right? There is no point in trying to bring them into our reality. We want to join them in their reality. If they're feeling a particular way or if they're experiencing pain, we may not be able to understand the words that they're sharing, but reading into their facial expressions and their body language, they tell us a story. We just have to listen. Yeah. And, and there lies where some of the name of the organization, your company comes from, right? These stories right. that all unfold. And that was one of the joys for me was to get to know uh, some of the residents around my mom at the time, because they, they were people that all had a story. And oftentimes it's those stories that don't leave right away. Right. Uh -huh. they, they can hang on to those stories. And there you are sitting with somebody who's a, a veteran of a war and they're telling you stories and they remember every single detail. Yes. But, what an honor to be there. So Caitlin, tell me a little bit about outreach in the community because I know you also have education and another thing I read called Fit Minds. Can you tell us a little bit about Alzheimer's education and Fit Minds, what, the, what those are about? Absolutely. So inside the community, you'll see at Anthology, we do unique programming. Uh, we do cognitive stimulation, stimulation program, hmm. uh, which is the example of Fit Minds. So that's really what Kayla's touching on, walking through the journey of our dementia residents and really working with them to migrate through their journey as they're, they're suffering the effects of memory loss. Yeah. So we utilize that tremendously in our community, um, but we also do outreach um, to the Metro Detroit area and we'll have virtual dementia programs. So we will allow the public to come into our community and demonstrate what people with memory loss are really going through um, and really creating an awareness through that virtual dementia program. And I know you see people of varied ages because you have everything from independent living, you know, through assisted living and beyond. Uh, but for so many people, this is not just an old person's issue. It may affect a lot of us. I Just today, no joke, I got a call from a friend and uh, told me that her husband, who I don't even know that he's got to 60 yet, has got a related dementia of some kind, and they're still going through the diagnostics. And it hits you hard. Uh, so I know you, you must act as a support system. Kayla, I'll come back to you. You must act as a support system for the family 
beyond the education and beyond the outreach to the community because there's so much emotion involved in this. Absolutely. And different family members, um, they process those very stressful situations differently, right? So we have to be um, very versatile in how we support different individuals. Like you said, there are various types of dementia that can affect an individual earlier in life. Um, an individual who has been affected by early onset Alzheimer's could have received their diagnoses before the age of 65. Someone yeah. who is likely affected with a type of dementia called frontotemporal dementia can be affected as early as in their 50s. Um, so we're not always just working with the adult children of parents who have experienced dementia. We may be working with spouses who their husband or their wife is being affected with memory loss, and they may have young children um, who are, could possibly still be in high school. Mm -hmm. So it affects every family differently. And so we're there and we're trained in various ways to be able to support those families through the journey and how it affects them. And Caitlin, as I come back to you, this notion of support and gathering together, we're stronger together. So is that one of the motivators for Anthology being involved uh, in a big way as supporting Alzheimer's Association of Michigan and the walk? Absolutely. And it is very empowering to see all the families and all of our care staff here, not only gather in Anthology of Troy, but all the other uh, four communities in Metro Detroit to see everybody come together as a community is so powerful. So if, uh, if we pick on Novi for a minute, uh, not for any particular reason, except that they're the, maybe the newest kid on the block, are there any special programs going on there or anywhere else we especially in Michigan should be aware of? Caitlin, I'll just stick with you for a minute. Sure, um, so you can call to schedule a virtual or a physical tour, excuse me. Um, they are opening up, they're, they're still taking deposits and at the end of this month, they will start moving um, residents in. So it's very, very exciting. It's a beautiful. Yeah. And we can still call or investigate any of the other locations as well, correct? I mean, those, are they fully open at this time? This will, we'll be uh, airing this starting in early October. So we've got a little distance, but is everybody pretty much opening now for public visitations and tours? We are, we are. We are taking the, the proper protocols and safety measures yeah. um, during this time to protect the vulnerable. Um, but yes, all of our communities are open. We're accepting new residents and you can always visit our website for more information. I do wanna point out something and I know Kayla and Caitlin, you'll both appreciate this because we sometimes talk about these or, or wrap issues like this and it can seem kind of down and dour. And it's not just a matter of independent living, but probably there even through assisted living. Some of the greatest conversations I've had, as I've mentioned, have been with people you know, in communities like your own and, and even the one that's in Northville with friends of ours. But we've got a 96 year old friend who is basically living an independent living. And uh, she is a joy to be around. There's a vibrancy to aging. Uh, not everybody is affected by something that gives them a problem, if you will, right? Right. So it's really uh, fun in a way to go to a place. We just took her home from church the other day and she said to us while we're driving, yeah, my son is turning 70. Man, is he old. <laughs> but, you know, that's a real, um, uh, uh, something she's not recognizing, but it's a real uh, education about her view of life. That even <laughs> at 96, she's still going, she still wants to get out. She wanted me to go get her a Diet Coke. I'm not kidding. Got it for her on the way home. And she thinks her son is old at 70. And somehow maybe she's not thinking 96. So my point in a long-winded way is saying, I've come across some great folks that are living in places and actually in anthology uh, like your own that are just filled with the idea of active aging. They just want to live life and have a little fun yet. Right. Aging is beautiful, quite honestly. There's something freeing about the level of independence that you can explore and the confidence that you have at aging. There's this level of yeah. wisdom that people can just continue to grow and learn and um, experience life that maybe they would have wished that they've done when they were younger, but they were held back by maybe they were, you know, timid or they didn't um, have the confidence at that point. But now they're like, well, who cares? You know, well, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to enjoy myself. And I just feel so jealous sometimes because I'm like, oh, I wish I had that level of, you know, just confidence that they just exude. It's so wonderful. Yeah. 
And Caitlin, you must see stories like that all the time and hear about those stories, you know, of people that are coming through anthology who are living life large. I, I don't know what my expectation is. I guess I've never been their age, so I don't know what it's like. <laughs> you know, <laughs> when I get there, I'll be able to look back and tell you. But you must come across people like that all the time that are aging well, or maybe a better way to put it is as well as they can. That's right. It's definitely an environment that I love to be in every day. So very, yeah. very and it is something that we're all going to have to deal with, you know, Botox and fillers aside, it's all going to happen. I'm just saying, it's just, I mean, look at me, it's going to happen. You know? So, uh, well, listen, give everybody an idea uh, as we wrap things up a little bit here of how we can get in touch with you at Anthology so we can take advantage of these virtual uh, experiences with Alzheimer's and also live and learn and maybe think about the idea that there's someone in our family who may need your assistance. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, I'll let you do it, Kayla. Do you have a, can you help us understand how we get in touch with you? Sure, so you can always visit anthologyseniorliving.com. We, again, in the Detroit area, have a community in Troy, Rochester, no Northville, and Novi, and we would love to schedule a tour with you and show you our beautiful community. And Kayla, back to you. Uh, what are um, one or two takeaways? Why should someone sign up to live at Anthology? What would you tell them? Um, I would say the active living opportunities. There are so many great things that we offer inside the walls of our community as far as peer support and opportunities for continued um, meaningfulness and purposefulness. We have some really wonderful alternative therapies as far as we referenced earlier, our Fit Minds program, which is a cognitive stimulation therapy program, which has proven um, to either maintain one's co cognition level or help to slow the, the deterioration that's found through the progression of memory loss. We have opportunities to support through um, technology. We offer um, a program through Opening Minds Through Art, which is an art therapy program. So things that one may not be able to find themselves as enjoying inside their own home, they could have the opportunity of exploring um, at our communities with us. Yeah. All right. Well, that's great. Well, listen, from, uh, from all of the team, thank you so much for supporting the Alzheimer's Association of Michigan and beyond, I know, and all that you do as a top tier sponsor of the walk. We really appreciate it. And it's, uh, I'm just one experience with my family. And then here just today, I learned of somebody else that may be touched by, uh, it may be something as simple as calling an 800 number for advice from Alzheimer's Association. It may be deeper than that. But you know that that sponsorship means a lot to so many families. So Caitlin and uh, Kayla, thank you so much. And uh, thank to, uh, thanks to Anthology, too, for all you do. Thank you. Thanks, Chuck. I appreciate your time. Oh, I do the same. And I appreciate you being here with us today. This has been another edition of ALZ Voices. And uh, we're glad you were with us today. Don't forget, there is a way you can still participate in the walk, uh, even though this will begin airing in the early part of October and the walk is behind us, even though it was a little later in the season. You can still contribute. Go to alz.org uh, slash walk. You can create a team, join a team. You can, uh, you know, come alongside another team and make a donation. We can use all the help we can get because all of us are uh, aging. And just by numbers alone, uh, Alzheimer's and dementia is coming at our population of baby boomers and beyond like a freight train. So we need all the muscle we can get and great people like this from Anthology. Thank you again, ladies. Uh, be well. And hopefully I'll get a chance to see you someday soon.